up Smashers. Hey, I'm gonna go a little quiet today because there's class going on in the background. I don't wanna mess it up. And uh, we've got badass Vanessa doing a super killer class. I'm gonna be talking about uh, hip mobility. So the way the hip moves, so just to give you an idea, yeah, I put my trusty camera stand, just to give you an idea, the, uh, the hip is designed to have 360 degrees of motion and there's no reason for there to be a restriction. None from a structural standpoint. It's a simple ball and socket designed to move super fluid, like super fluid, right? You didn't expect that, did you? So I'm going to show you how to hit something that is often missed and if you look at the way the hip is designed, when you are missing, when, when, you're, when you're missing here, I'll go like this so you can see. When you're missing that, uh, that rotation, so I'll bring my hip up like this, when you're missing that external rotation, of the hips so we're doing external internal rotation or even just being able to flare your hip out like that when that stuff causes a lot of pain the, the problem is it's not a, a mechanical restriction about 99% of the time the one percent it is don't do any of this stuff go get a look at it's usually a tissue extensibility problem so joint capsules all stuck and then there's a funky muscle that most people miss we get in that couch stretch all the time we hit that um, that rectus femoris that runs all the way from the top of the hip all the way across the knee. We hit the uh, psoas. The one we're missing is the iliacus. So the iliacus comes across the top of the hip. It gets super funky and grisly. I'm going to show you a way to just grind that out like you put a just a drill and just started pounding it out because you know what? It turns into a piece of shoe leather and it restricts a lot of mobility in the hip. And what it does is because it comes around onto the inside of the femur a little bit, it rotates the femur inwards, collapses the knees, and then you wind up squatting like a little old lady. No offense to little old ladies, if you squat like a badass like the Iron Nun, then never mind, you got me beat. But otherwise, if your squat's really bad and it suffers, your mechanics suffer, and then you get you wind up with low back problems. So we're gonna clear up the uh, we're gonna clear up the iliacus. I'm gonna show you how to peel open the joint capsule in a funky version of the figure four involving a band. And then, uh, and then I'm going to show you one last thing, and it's missing in just about everybody's training. That's a plank. We're going to hang out on a plank. I'm not going to make you watch me do it for like 10 minutes, but you're going to do it for 10 minutes. Yeah, it's that ugly. But plank, what a, what a plank does is it gives you midline stability. So what happens a lot of time is that midline starts to go into extension, right? And now you have the midline of a marshmallow. Your spine is super sloppy, and we have all this movement anyway that we're designed to have. You sacrifice all that movement. And uh, you start injuring yourself and your hips just get the crap beat out. So how we unload that stuff is by first restoring some mobility into the joint itself, get rid of that tissue extensibility restriction, and then number two is um, strengthen up all the stuff around it so you can be, uh, well, pretty much bulletproof and iron, right? Like the iron nun. It's just that simple. So we're going to take a, uh, yeah, we got the awesome um, camera stand. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a kettlebell and we're going to get into that inguinal crease. This is just super ugly. This is one of the ugliest mobilities, but it's super legit. Too legit to quit. Yeah, I'm right by the speaker, so. All right, so I'm gonna just move the uh, cone just for a second. So you wanna take this, and you're gonna get it right into that inguinal crease. So if you look at the way the body sits, there's a crease right here. You're gonna come right into that crease with a kettlebell, and then you're just gonna wag your leg back and forth and grind this out. You're gonna hit spots you didn't even think you had. It feels that abysmal. So all we do is we angle at the same angle as the, uh, as the inguinal crease. Find that spot, watch out for the twig and giggleberries. I've said it many, many times. This is a 44 pound. The weight of the kettlebell doesn't matter, but the size of the, size of the horn on the kettlebell matters, matters. So you wanna make sure this is pretty big so it really drives in there. Um, something really small, the kettlebell's gonna wobble all over the place, so don't use that. So get over this thing. Oh, it's super ugly. I kinda don't wanna do this because I did lots of violent hip extension in a workout today. And then you're just gonna take your leg, bend it up, and then just back and forth like you're wagging the tail of a dog and you're just gonna hunt around scour and clean up that iliacus and you're gonna do this for how long yeah ninjas you know two minutes just smash away that's number one number two is this one's pretty funky and it's actually really effective so you can see i got a band sitting on the rig and what we want to do is we want to get into a basic figure four but with the band helping us out. So we kick in. Half of me wants to watch Vanessa lift because she makes it look so friggin' easy. She's smooth. She's parting when she lifts. Just gotta show you. Isn't that savage? She makes it look easy. Badass athlete, badass friend, all around good person. That's Vanessa. Good. So you're gonna come into the rig. So this is on the rig. I have my hand 
bracing this on my uh, on my knee. So I'm bracing the ankle on my knee. I'm gonna load up the band as much as humanly possible. And I'm gonna let the band do the work and it's gonna peel open that hip. You're gonna feel it deep in the groin. You're gonna feel it in the high hip. And you're just gonna chill, just mellow out like you're sitting there watching your favorite movie. For two, it's just that it. So just hang out. The band is doing all the work, so I don't want you fighting the band. Let that band peel you open. That's gonna open up that hip capsule a ton. That's number two. And number three is easy if I can ever get out of the band. Imagine that video, huh? Smash works stuck in a band. And then you're gonna get in a plank. Now normally when we do planks, we get out like this, really externally rotate. I want you to do it a little easier. You're just gonna get like a sphinx and just hang out. When you're doing a plank, this is not a plank. This is not a plank. I want you nice and solid, hang out. Midline is super contracted, glutes are contracted, quads are contracted. Everything is just super tight, ready to rock and roll. If this is easy, then get up into a plank this way. Externally rotate so the uh, antecubital fossa, this hole in the elbow here, is facing towards your head. So you're externally rotated. And what do you do? You just chill for how long? Two ninjas. That's it. That's how you clean up the hip stabilize that spine all at the same time, get rid of a lot of those low back issues and smooth out your squat and all your movement. It's just that easy. Hey, I'm Smashworks, Trev. I'll check you guys out tomorrow. Have an awesome day.